So we've been part of an effort, a nationwide effort really, for recovery of the peregrine falcon. And so we continue to do that today through education outreach events like this, providing a nest box on top of not only this building, but several other facilities throughout our territory. And so they will return to the nest box on top of the uh, building here uh, late February, early March. Um, about 30 days after that, after mating, they'll hatch or they'll um, release some eggs. And then about 30 days after that, they'll hatch. So much like the American bald eagle, peregrine falcons were severely affected by DDT mid last century. As, as most people understand that the, the DDT, the chemical in the DDT caused the eggs to be thinner. And so when birds naturally nested on, on the, the eggs, they would crack prematurely. We were lucky to have uh, Pat Swalowski from the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks and uh, Michelle McNulty from Fish and Life Service, both uh, experts in their field and they've seen not only peregrine falcons for, for years and years, but other birds as well. So we try to ban the chicks about 20 to 25 days old, just so we know at that time they're, they're old enough that the legs are old enough we can put the bands on correctly but not too old that they're gonna jump before we get to open the box for them. It's, it's always cool to see them for the first time. They all have just slightly different behaviors, different, different ways of dealing things. Some are a little more calm, some are a little more active. And so you never know what you're gonna find in the box. We just enjoy doing this. Uh, this is just a small component of our overall avian protection program. And so this is just one species that we, that we focus on, but we, we, we do a lot of work with other, other bird species as well.